Jamie from Inky and Scrappy sharing with you today a long fonts to da diorama take two. So for this one I wanted to use this printed acetate from Michael's Recollections collection. It is a I think eight by eight pack of printed on acetate sheets and so I wanted to use the web so I print I cut two so I used two sheets of it cut two with that one I tried folding it and getting it to work this way I didn't actually end up trying it in the end because it just wouldn't fold flat and then pop up to do the other if you know what I mean like it didn't matter how many times I tried folding it back and forth to get that to loosen up it just wasn't gonna go so I kind of set that one off to the side and I was like, I'll work on the background. So again, I did cut my background piece from that second stitch, second rectangle from the largest sti stitched rectangle stack. I will get the words out today uh, for the back of my diorama. It's the same size as that diorama sh front plate, except it doesn't have the little notches in it. So I don't think you need the notches in ta-da diorama it just works to me it works well because it's one flat sheet and I can cut two pieces at once if I need to I like to save time when it comes to die cutting so I ink blended on there with that ripe persimmon I can say it at this time I said it wrong last time and then you know I felt bad but so ripe persimmon and then uh, villainous potion for my background color so Team Orange and Team Purple joining together. I wanted it to kind of look like a creepy moon, but a night sky. I don't know if I got that across, but that was kind of what I was going for. So for this one, I used that the same black paper that I was using for my front, which I think is 65 pounds from close to my heart. It's definitely not strong enough for those bracket pieces on the Tada diorama. I would definitely go with, so my third one, which is coming up, I use a heavier weight and I like it a lot better. So because I couldn't get that front acetate piece to work as a full sheet of acetate, I am going to cut this down. I think, did I end up, I don't remember what I'm doing here, but I cut this one down. See, here's me trying it. I really, really, really wanted it to work. And it just wasn't going to fold flat enough. And so I was like, you know what? I'm just going to end up having to cut it. But I wanted it to be see-through because I wanted you to be able to see that orange glow behind the spider web. And so I'm starting here with a piece of black. I ditched the black because obviously it wasn't going to show the color that I wanted through it and so I went and die cut these out with some white again and then I mirrored the ink blending on this one now I wouldn't have had to do that orange I don't think I probably could have kept it all purple on the inside piece there but hindsight is 2020 right so I just kind of made it match my background piece so they went together let that dry Yes, I made them a hot mess, but it worked. So anyways, I let that dry and then came back. And I didn't cut them on full sheets either because I knew I didn't need a full sheet. I only needed a little sliver on the front. So if you see the one is white, I wasn't worried about the part that was on the back or on the side, I guess. Maybe I do end up going in. I did end up going in and put purple on the side just because you can see it from the side. The back panel I wasn't worried about because it's going to be stuck down to that front panel. So I wasn't overly concerned with that one. But I did end up doing the purple on those side panels just so it wasn't such a stark white when it's popped open. So I'm going to kind of lay this out here, kind of figure out so you can see where that orange is going to be in the middle. I'm going to cut this one down on both of them. I think it ends up being two and a quarter inches on the cut. So when you cut, if you cut the full panel, it's going to be four and a half inches wide, I think. Don't quote me on this. I think that's what it is. But so I'm going to take my piece of double-sided adhesive here, some score tape from scrapbook.com. 
And I'm putting it as close to that fold line as I possibly can. And then I'm going to go in after the fact and take my guillotine cutter here and cut it as close to that as possible. I just want that sliver there because I need the acetate to stick to that piece somehow. So this is how I'm making that work. Now, because it's score tape, it is going to be see-through-ish, or this one is at least see-through-ish. I don't know. Just regular score tape have color? I don't know. I am going to add a little bead of blue as well. It gives me just a little bit of wiggle room here. Now, I'm making sure that I'm going to do this right, so lining up that center piece in the middle here. And so I will do the one side. And then I will do the other side the same way. So we're moving that adhesive sheet, adding some glue, and then tucking this on there. And then I'm going to make sure that it lines up fairly good here in the middle in just a second. And so it looks fairly seamless at this point. It looks, you know, you can still see the glow through the back. Probably not as good as I wanted it to be, but it is a darker piece of acetate. So I think if I used, I would have used a clearer piece. Maybe you would have seen more of that adhesive, but you really don't see it on this one at all. So I'm just going to line those up in the middle. And then, of course, I'm going to trim off. I didn't have it exactly. So I just had to trim off a little bit on the one side here. No big deal. And then I will pop on the front piece here. So the front piece kind of slides around a little bit. And I think it has to deal a lot with, I mean, that really is kind of what that piece is. It's going to slide around until it's all the way open. But I think part of it is because my brackets are lighter weight, they just, I don't know, it gives it a little more room than I would like. So on my third try I did use that heavier weight and I like the stability of it more. It doesn't slide really really like it does on my first one and this one. I just think those bracket pieces needed to be a little bit thicker. Now the other thing with this one was because I have that second layer in there it did kind of get stuck once it was all the way popped up which is fine once it's all the way popped up because then it's open and it's going to stay open. I don't have to worry about it slipping back closed which I kind of had issues with my first one. And I think that was because I used that lighter weight paper on my first one. So this one, I think my side pieces were a hundred pound card on this one and not the lighter 80 pound. And I liked that a little bit better. I did end up shaving off just a little tiny bit where that acetate met the paper on that one just to get I was a little off when I put them together, and so it was sticking there. So I'm bringing in Tim Holtz's Life of the Party stamp set for that lovely spider web on this one. And then, of course, I'm coming back in with some stays on opaque. I think it's white. I don't know. It's their white one. <sighs> I don't remember the name off the top of my head. One of these times I'll remember. But I'm going to bring that in, and I just wanted to add a little bit of interest to that front panel piece. I didn't want it to be stark black. I tried adding a little bit of purple and orange to it, and it really wasn't showing up like I wanted it to show up. And so I was like, well, if I add just a little bit of some cobweb look to it, it just kind of adds, and it, you know, feeds my grungy heart when it comes to, you know, adding those partial stamps on top of it. Nothing perfect, just kind of going in and pressing here and there. And it gives it that cool cobweb look. And then I do tend to clean my stamps off when I use stays on right away with some stays on cleaner. Now this one I didn't let it sit and it didn't clean out the greatest. If you leave the stays on sit on it like the cleaner sit on it for a little while, it does clean off. A little bit better so if that's something that you struggle with it's something I struggle with and I only can tell you that now because I did it on the one that I just made and I let it sit for a little bit and it definitely cleaned off a lot better than that one did so FYI 
So for this one, I'm just figuring out how I want that one to go. What is going to be my top and or bottom of the spider web? Because I wanted, you know, it to hang, the top piece to look like it was hanging a little bit more. So I do have those, I don't know, the hill pieces or the pieces that, you know, hold the other layers in the diorama already in there. But I ended up taking them out, so I didn't actually show me adding them. I did die cut that from that same acetate cobweb piece, and it was just too dark, and I felt it didn't, I don't know, it didn't give me the look I was going for in the end. I had more starts and stops to this one than, uh, I really wasn't even going to, like, do the editing on this one, because it was just so much. But it turned out so cool, so I figured I would share all of my, ugh, that didn't work with you. So I ended up die cutting those pieces from some clear acetate, added them in there, and then I had stamped and colored all of my little pieces. I did end up using the Fantastic Friends stamp set. I think that's what it's called. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but it's the Lawn Fawn one with the little spiders in it. I did do the add-on as well because I wanted the other little spider. So I think I have the spiders that go back and forth. And I did color a bat and I kind of made him a purplish blue bat to go. I wanted him to kind of blend into the background. And then I decided not to use him in the end anyway. So he's sitting on my desk. I had to find something else for him to fly away on. It's, you know, sometimes that's how it works. I was planning on putting the bat in this one and then I decided I just didn't like him in there. He covered up, I don't know. I just, I liked the little spiders in there and leaving just the spiders in there. I just liked them better. Now they did, I didn't die cut these. I used the brother scan and cut. And because it's that skinny little line for the spider hanging down, I didn't want to cut directly. And then of course all the little fin finicky ones. So I did put the outside, like, I didn't do the direct, like, directly on the line cut because I was worried that it would, like, eat my spiders. So I did just come in with my Copics that matched the best to my background to color in the outline on these to make them blend a little bit better. I don't know. And then for the second one, I ended up just going with a black streak for my my line and I ended up liking that better than my other one. I don't know if I liked it better, but once I did it, I was like, okay, now I have to make the other one match. So I ended up going in and going over the other one with the black. And then I think I ended up using some of the leftover metallic spray stains from Tim Holtz to kind of add a little bit. So I kind of blended in with the background for all the things. So I did end up coloring the other one like purplish. So the little strand that the spider is hanging on is glittery, you know, all the things. So once I have it this far, I was like, well, I decided I needed to figure out a sentiment. And I couldn't decide if I wanted the sentiment to be on the front, on the inside. <sighs> so I did a little searching with my stamp sets again because, you know, that's how we do it. I do add some little spiders onto the front of my little ta-da diorama here. And of course, I'm just going around the outside with black to kind of hide that white. It's faster than fussy cutting. And when they're this little, I have a hard time fussy cutting those little itty bitty pieces anyways. So I was happy with where my spiders were, all of the things, but I needed a sentiment, of course, on the front for something. So uh, yeah, here's me thinking. And so I decided to do a caught in a spider's web. It is a, I think the tiny text Halloween from Tim Holtz. And I just like the same. And of course, you know, I freehanded it. And of course I mucked it up. <sighs> I'm telling you, this one was like, Everything that I could have gone wrong do go wrong. But in the end, I got there. I came in with some white gel pen to kind of touch up my letters there that didn't fully come through. And now I tried to get that white line off of it with my 
colors from my background, something that went close. And then I tried with the, the leftover mica spray, and it just wasn't, like, I was like, oh, you can definitely just tell that I just tried to cover that up, and it wasn't going. So I was like, you know what? This is what spider webs are for, right? So I brought back in that spider web stamp and some VersaFine Onyx Black, and then I just went on the back and randomly did a little bit of some black spider webs. And it makes my mistake look like it was an intentional thing. You know, it's all good. And I really did like the final look of that because it just kind of tied in that front piece and that back piece, and it just kind of worked. So, I will add my front piece back on again. So, that's the one thing about the diorama, that it comes apart fairly easy, so you can adjust when needed. Otherwise, I think I would have had an even harder time getting that caught in a spider's web sentiment on the inside. I probably would have ended up doing it on a banner style thing, but I like that it was directly stamped onto that background piece. It doesn't pull away from my whole scene, I think. Ah. So I'm going to mat this on top of a 5 by 7 card base that I cut in half. So it ends up being 3.5 by 5 inches, and then the fold is going to be on that 3.5 inch side. So I did a 3.5 by 5 inch piece here, and then I did add a little bit of Distress Oxide in that uh, villainous potion and black soot to just kind of make it go with my card colors here because my purple was a little bit too bright for me. And so I'm going to center that as best as I can on the front here. It just gives it a small little border all the way around. It was just easier than trying to, you know, make a card base when I had pre-done 5x7s there that were close. So there it is, all finished, and yes, you get the beautiful light coming in from the west window next to my desk. It's that time of year again. <sighs> so I tried standing in the way for most of it, but it's an odd angle for me. So there it is, the finished card for you. And yes, I had to do some dramatics with my fingers because it was fun. And you know, the light was there, shadows. It's all good. Anyways, I hope you have an amazing day. Keep getting angry. Bye.